Hi. So, I'm a meal, and I'm trying to save my wife's life, and I need your help. She has amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. She's got Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, the thing that Stephen Hawking had, the guy who talks with the mechanical voice in the wheelchair. Cosmos, you know, thinks about universes and black holes and made a really cool movie. Um, the guy playing him um, won the best actor. Anyway, didn't see it. <laughs> I probably should. So we had our visit today with a, a guy named Dr. John Ravitz at the University of California, San Diego. And um, we found this guy there, um, and we really, really liked him because he's the director of the ALS clinic down there, which is what we're trying to hopefully participate, you know, become part of. Um, and an ALS clinic is like a, a center where they're, they do a multidisciplinary um, approach to, you know, treating your symptoms, you know, trying to make you as comfortable as possible, ensuring that, you know, um, you have the support that you need as far as understanding next steps in this process. Because again, ALS is not a, you know, there's no cure for it. It's degenerative. So it's basically one direction and it just moves that way and it doesn't stop. Well, um, we're going to do something about that. So, um, he was so kind and listened to her whole story and it's such a therapeutic experience. And this is the director of the ALS clinic, you know, it's, it's the top guy. He's, he's considered one of the, you know, most renowned ALS researchers on the West Coast and probably in the world, frankly, you know, you can look him up, you know, he's pretty, pretty um, cool cat. And he actually had an entourage. He had one of his fellows, students, uh, he, a rather fellows uh, come in and sit and you know, listen and observe because ALS is not something that, you know, most neurologists don't really know that much about it, frankly. What we were hoping he would do for us is he would be able to parse out the difference, parse out the difference between uh, um, the, whether or not there's some sort of a pain syndrome going or not associated with Olga's um, uh, previous surgery and you know he, he ruled it out he basically said nah it, it's not it's it's ALS it's not there's no there's no interaction there that's old stuff and that's 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 not the case and you know that was hard to hear um, because even though we've already had a second opinion and we've already had a basically a second breakdown because it's pretty much just another you know you relive the whole experience again this was this kind of almost came across as like a third um, opinion, um, if you will. I was, you know, I, I was a pretty sure that Olga was going to go into it with that hope. I would, you know, what else are you going to do, right? You have nothing else to hope for, you know, and why not? Why not? Who cares if you're delusional? Who cares, right? What else are you going to do? What's the alternative? There is no alternative. So God bless her. I love it. You know, of course, <laughs> There's this weird thing that's that goes on with me, you know, as the caregiver here. You know, I have to stop myself from reacting because the logical side of me is like, um, no, you have ALS. We, you know, it's 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 a done deal, you know. But the the human side, the psychologist, the mentat, if you will. <laughs> um, I'm a Dune fan. Um, <laughs> uh, is is like no, she, it doesn't matter if if the the chances of this guy coming back into the office after looking at the MRIs and the doing the exam and he says no, both UCLA and Kaiser are wrong. You don't have ALS. The chances of that are nil. You know, pretty much right next to nil. But but if you're in a position where you're facing your you know you know the abyss right it doesn't matter man i'll grasp for whatever you need to grasp for even if it's a mirage um so i have to check myself and say no don't like come at her and save money no come on you know the chances are right? Who gives a, you know what the chances are you know let 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 her go through the experience and i think i did better with that today but um um, and and Olga did better with it today too because 
Um, her the breakdown after the second diagnosis um, was actually more severe than I was expecting, than I thought it would be, you know. But um, the breakdown today, you know, the the reliving of the the diagnosis um, was was is was more contained, was more muted, and I'm not even sure if it's a bad thing or a good thing, but. I'm going to guess that it's, you know, a sign of progress, you know, we're moving towards acceptance it takes for some people five, six months to accept this fate. Um, um, and I'm, you know, just arrogant enough to, to think that, you know, I'm one month in post diagnosis and I, and I, I think I'm um, woefully aware of the whole Kubler Ross thing, you know, with the accepting the acceptance and the you know all that stuff. And so I know that I'm, I know I'm going through that process. You know, there's a metacognitive thing that's happening with me, and I'm, it happens with everybody. You know, where you're thinking about why you're thinking the way you're thinking, right? And um, you know, I'm I'm a I've gone from. I don't think there ever was a denial phase for me, um, but but I'm at, at a place right now where I'm jacked. I mean, I'm making videos for crying out loud, right? So after um, uh, the 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 visit with rabbits, this doctor and the fellow, we we really felt energized, you know, because we go okay, because we got a lot of stuff done, you know. Um, we, for example, got into the UCSD ALS clinic, which is apparently not that easy thing to get into. You apparently have to get accepted into the clinic because they don't just take, just because you have ALS doesn't mean you get to participate in this clinic, and which is strange. Um, but apparently there's criterion involved. They have to determine that you would actually benefit from from uh, participating in the work of the clinic. And the clinic is interesting. So like I said, it's multidisciplinary. So they have like a neurologists and nutritionists and psychologists and physical therapists. And you basically, every three months you go there and spend like 24 hours or whatever, um, you know, going through this whole experience of just getting boned up, you know, come on, you're going to last another three months. No, you're not. You're going to thrive another three months. And here's how you're going to do it. You know, it's that kind of stuff. So, um, I know UCI has a clinic as well, which would have been interesting. Who knows? Maybe we'll someday switch over to there. But anyway, we're very excited about that. So, so we got into the clinic, right? Big deal, big deal. So she's going to be able to be monitored, um, uh, professionally, um, by the leading research organization in the West Coast, at least so in in the field of ALS specifically. So, um, happy happy days. But um, uh, it got me, you know, really thinking a little bit more about what is the ask here. You know, I mean, what what am I what am I trying to do by asking my friends and family to, you know, support. Um, this cause of, of getting Olga to be the one of the first people ever to survive ALS thanks to technology and science. Um, the the ask is first, if you have money, please donate. But if you don't have money, I understand. The the bigger thing, the thing that's that's really going to save her life, um, is going to be to try to influence. Um, this organization, this company called Brainstorm, um, to try to influence this um, association called the AS, the ALS Association, the National ALS Association, to try to influence the, the Food and Drug Administration, and in some ways to try to see if there's any room to catalyze um, the White House or you know, somebody in the White House. So there's a there's a there's a lot of options here. So, so to, to recap, if you if you didn't see my my announcement video about what's happening with Olga, there's this organization out of um, uh, Israel and New York called Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics, and they've got this new technology that they've developed over the past decade or so. Um, that uh, is, is basically a way of taking your own stem cells 
juicing them up, beefing them up, um, uh, and then pushing them back into your spinal column via lumbar puncture, a spinal tap. And so let that beefed up juice to, you know, just wash the dead neurons and bring the dead neurons back to life again. Um, yeah, that's a very simplistic way of putting it, but that's basically what it is. And, and this company is basically been able to get through phase two trials. There have been 50, there have been 51 failed attempts at some kind of an attempt to cure ALS, you know, whether it's a biological or some sort of a drug or some sort of a therapy, some sort of a procedure, you know, um, whatever, all failed, all failed. Now, with, with some exceptions, there's two of them that were, were approved basically, but here, because again, if you saw my video, you know, we're talking about, you know, three to nine months basically is what, what the expected um, expansion is as, as far as your life expectancy if you get on these drugs and there are side effects and there's a lot of risk involved including the progression of ALS actually increasing so um, some people just say you know what <laughs> no it's uh, not for me um, and in fact you know as if, if you recall I mentioned that there's a trial that's a clinical trial that's being conducted with this process this neuron technology specifically to try to cure ALS um, and, uh, and if you're on these drugs, like Radicava or, or Resilience thing, whatever, um, then you, you can't even participate in the trial because they're like, oh, we don't, that stuff, get it out of your system because we don't want it to skew the actual results of the phase three trial. We don't want to say, well, look at how wonderful it, the neuron drug is and have to have somebody come back and make the argument that said, well, maybe it wasn't neuron, maybe it was the radicava that was in the system, you know, or, or maybe the gains really aren't there. Maybe the gains were there as a result of the addition of the radicava to the the neuron procedure and, and whatnot, which would be fine extension studies to do, right? But, you know, in order for it to be a pure study, in order to be able to do apples to apples, to compare apples to apples, you know, that's, they're, they're really want to make sure that they have a, everybody cleared out so that, you know, there won't be much pushback. I mean, this is going to be a miracle. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you folks, this is, if this is, if this is true and all indication, unless this is like one of the biggest scams of all time in, of med, of, in medical history, um, and it's not, um, this is going to uh, mark a huge advancement in um, our ability to heal ourselves my loved ones and so forth it's a big deal it's really a big deal and i'm i'm in many ways blessed um to be able to uh at the very least serve as a maybe as a, a bystander commentator you know of, of watching this ex process occur because i'm in it too right i mean it's me and my wife we got the diagnosis yes she has the actual um sclerosis in her in her neurons but um now, she, both of us. I'm. I'm going to. I'm basically going to be her, her voice, her, her, her spirit, her soul. You know. So this is we're in it together on, on this, in this fight. So um, and it's beautiful because it's really gotten us even closer. I mean, we were rarely close, but now it, it, there's like there's this there's an ultra level, folks. Maybe we can talk about that at some point. So anyway. Um, how do we then go about influencing these people? And what, what the hell is the issue, right? I mean, if you, again, recall, I mentioned, you know, the FDA isn't saying that we're not going to fast track these drugs or these procedures. They're saying, yeah, they actually have a formal process. In fact, I, you know, I may be wrong about this, pretty certain I'm not, but um, it's, it's like a form, <laughs> you know, it's like a one page form that the sponsoring um, organization who is doing the trial just simply has to fill out and say, hey, look, FDA, we're, we're also going to do a parallel track on this, if y'all don't mind, um, um, because people are dying, you know, like that, you know, it's like, the go it's like, 12 people or so, you know, eight to 12 people or so died today, just today, statistically speaking, as a result of complications from 
um, ALS, right? And and that's that's a freaking tragedy when we know when we know that there's a, a procedure that's like not only slowing it down and stopping it, but for most many people, excuse me, um, functionality is coming back. And and here's the thing: I was telling Olga about it today uh, uh, as we were leaving our appointment with Dr. Ravitz was um, I was telling her that the phase two results were a single dose, right? And that's one of the beauties of this phase three trial that's being conducted right now is that that's a triple dose, right? And so, and we haven't been able to, we haven't gotten any, well, we don't have the official report yet because it's not complete yet. Apparently they haven't even completed the enrollment yet in this trial. Um, but they're expecting to sometime this summer. The issue, as I understand it right now, is as follows. This will be my first attempt at trying to lay it out. So uh, I'm sure I'll have to do subsequent um, posts uh, to correct myself. But um, here's what I, this is what I've learned. This is what I, I'm trying to eke out to see what's happening here, right? Why the hell isn't this, why isn't this already fast-tracked, right? <laughs> There's more than enough evidence. There's uh, leaks that are coming out of the phase three um, trial, because remember the phase three trial started like a year ago already. They've, they've already enrolled, I'm going to say about 180, 190 people out of the 200. You know what I'm saying? They're right towards the, the end of it at this point from what we're gathering. And you guys remember maybe a couple of years ago, there was this ice bucket challenge thing that was happening all across America. America actually, I'll call it the planet, really, um, where people were dumping water um, cute videos on twi Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook and stuff, and cool videos, uh, you know, honestly. Um, unfortunately, it didn't do much to educate people about ALS. It certainly didn't educate me on ALS. Actually, I don't even really remember what the hell that thing was for. Why were we raising money? I just thought, hey, okay, that's a cool thing. We're raising money, but let's check out, you know, Magic Johnson get ice dumped all over his face or something like that, you know. Um, so th there was a tremendous amount of uh, moolah that um that that campaign that viral campaign um raised and you know i, I really want to look into the history of what happened specifically with that I'm, I'm curious about it maybe maybe that'll be a topic for something to do a little episode on so all that money is pretty much being controlled by this organization called the ALS Association. It's a national organization and the states, most of the states across America all have local chapters, right? So ALS San Diego, we have an ALSA, you know, in San, excuse me, clinic, not clinic, uh, okay, San Diego version. They have a San Diego chapter. There's an Orange County chapter. Now these are, you know, um, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm, uh, they're not profits, you know, they're manned by great, wonderful people, the local chapters, you know, we went and met with a guy named Keith, he's, I'm assuming one of the counselors, I'm not sure what his title was, he was one of the first guys that we talked to as soon as we got the diagnosis, in fact, I think we went and saw him the next day, um, you know, we learned a lot of stuff from the, from the guy, um, we asked him about alternative or, or, you know, potential um, therapies and he's like yeah there's really nothing going on right now there's always clinical trials you can try and so I said well um, you know I, I just did like you know one half you know maybe half hour two an hour's worth of research <laughs> right online and um, you know it's it's more than apparent that there you know neuron is it maybe this this is the treatment that's going to at the very least get us to a point where we can come to a curative solution. So I asked him, do you, you know, what about neuro? And he goes, yeah, that's still pretty, it's early on with that. And in my head, I'm saying, um, no, it's not. They're wrapping up phase three, bruh. And again, wonderful human being. His, his, the, the information he gave us and, and the tone he used in talking with us, you know, I'll, 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 you know, God bless you, man. You, you were a kind, kind man. He sent me so many resources just to kind of kickstart me and say, look, listen to these guys. Listen to what these people have to say. Here's some folks. He's actually the guy who um, uh, first um, brought 
John Rabbits to my attention. He's the one who sent, hey, check out this guy. He was, gave a, it was sent me a YouTube video of him doing a lecture at UCSD about some of the stuff that he's working on in, in his research. Um, so uh, God bless him, but they hadn't heard about like the most exciting thing that's happening in the field. Um, or, or at least he kind of said he'd heard of it, but he said eh, it's very early on. And I mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I guess in the scheme of things, it's still early, right? Because even if even if it does get through FDA, which again, I'm I'm I've gazed into my crystal ball, folks, and I'm telling you, FDA is approving this thing. It's still going to be 18, 24, maybe longer months. Um, before this comes to comes to a hospital near you so yeah i guess in that sense it might be early but um no it's not this is the closest we've gotten you know um to being able to slow down stop and hopefully reverse this damn thing um um so it it, it was my first introduction to the idea that I'm not really sure folks really know what's happening in this field. Like like the ALS Association people don't know. It turns out they, they do know. They do know. But there's there's a there's a strange thing that's happening where for whatever reason the ALS Foundation didn't spend a single dime on helping fund the research in you know, brainstorm cell therapeutics in developing this this procedure this life-saving procedure it's not curative okay fine but if you ask me i heard again this guy mike hansen great guy you know excellent videos on youtube talking about you know the the fight to try to you know come up with a damn um solution here um it's not a cure but as, as far as i'm concerned it's a cure for death Right, it stops death from happening. So how is that not a cure? Um, so the ALS Foundation apparently, I, I did a little bit of digging, and it turns out I may be wrong about this. So please, somebody correct me if I if I am wrong about this. But um, they did say, yeah, okay, we will. Here's a couple bucks for you. Here's a couple dollar, right? And apparently, what ended up happening? Here's a matching video. All right, Oletta Adams, get here. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's, it's frightening that there is a little uh, black box that's listening to me right now. And there's a little, do you see the uh, other little, that, that's not a black box, but it's a little you know, cylinder sitting back there, probably listening to me too. Let's see, is she listening? Alexa. Oh, yeah, there she is. Hi, honey. <laughs> okay, um, what am I talking about? Yeah, so, so, um, why wouldn't this, so, so the companies basically wrote a letter. I, I read this letter. It was from Brainstorm to the ALS ASAP Foundation. And basically, if I recall correctly, it was a letter that said, hey, listen, um, nit, we're not going to be taking your measly, you know, buck and a half here. You know, we're, 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 uh, you know, they got, they were able to, I believe they were, got $16 million worth of funding. Um, the, um, there's a, or, 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 uh, organization in California, uh, the California Research for Neurodegenerative something. I don't know what it is. It's a California, it's our tax dollars basically that basically funded almost entirely the, this, this brainstorm, um, uh, clinical trials. Of course, Brainstorm did come up with the catch as well. My understanding at this point is this company is solvent up until the end of the trial. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether or not. Oh, you yeah, no, 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 no. I believe that they will be, they'll be fine post the trial because I heard something about another $20 million release of stock or I don't know. Anyway, so who cares about that? So why weren't, um, why, why, why aren't they like spending some money? To, and, I've found out since that the critics of the, apparently there's a lot of critics of the ALSA at this point. Maybe a lot is not the best way to 
say it. There's a growing number of people who are critics of the ALSA are saying that, hey, listen, um, we really appreciate you your help here, but um, why aren't you spending that money on getting drugs to the ALS patients? You know, the ones that are, you know, having trouble breathing, the ones that, you know, can't drive anymore, the ones that, you know, are confined to a wheelchair, the ones that have feeding tubes and have been ventilated because in order for them to breathe, you know, why are we using that money that was donated by the generous parts of America and the wonderful, you know, people of the planet in, in saving these people's lives as opposed to dumping it primarily into almost everything, you know, that's, this is the, this is one of the issues, one of the criticisms is that there is apparently no no research strategy right it's kind of like um hey you, you know there, here's a lobbyist that just came up to me from you know astrazeneca or i don't know is that a pharma i don't know big pharma company x and said hey why don't you take a look at this thing or little pharma company y and said hey take a look at this thing okay fine let's take a look at this thing that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense again this mike hansen guy he made a really interesting point in one of his interviews that i was listening to so he was saying that that uh he's a business guy right i mean he's got als i think it's hereditary als he's got and he was saying that he's a business guy and in business you don't take your, you know, funds and invest in everything, right? Yes, there's, if you're investing, if you want a portfolio, yeah, you certainly want to diversify. But if you want to, if you have a mission, if you're trying to attain something, you don't just like scattershot every, your, you know, all your data, right? You, you say, okay, let's see, can we, can we narrow down some walls here and say, hmm, instead of the whole universe of what's possible, we're going to narrow it down and say, you know, I think we need to look into two areas, stem cells, you know, neuro rehabilitation, and probably the molecular route, right? Getting down into the, you know, playing with the little molecules, um, which is, um, makes a lot of sense. Um, and I'm learning more about that. I don't want to talk about it yet until I can figure it out. So, um, the ALSA works like that. Smart people who are trying to get something done and, and just kind of makes you wonder, you know, is this in fact what the ALSA is wants? Do they want to help the patients that are suffering right now? You know, I think if you if you look at their mission statement and their goals and whatnot, yeah, of course they do. They want to support that, but they also want to fund research and they want to. There's philanthropy involved, and of course they're constantly fundraising. That's like their primary function is just raising more and more money. And these these amazing human beings across America that are you know suffering from this 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 horrible like just just think of it uh, uh disease are sitting there going what you tell me you have 115 million dollars sitting in a bank collecting interest and you're what and and i'm i'm seeing that there's there's real drugs and procedures in the pipeline that can actually save me and you're not even funding it you're not using that money that wasn't even yours to begin with it was donated by by the the people of a you know across the world to to, to to people like these ALS patients you're going to just hang on to it um, so um, I think that's one of the things that needs to get done right we need to we need to get ALSA to to really come up with a research strategy for whatever reason they are funding a whole bunch of stuff and they are not funding the the one procedure that everybody um, who is anybody including this guy we talked to we talked to john rabbits today about the neuron trial and he said yeah it's it incidentally he's doing his own clinical trial it's in als and it's it's in the it's in respiratory field you know it's to try to um come up with the process i think i gotta learn more about it to so try to come up with a way to help you know, um, keep lung function going for as long as possible. 
Um, so, and he wasn't like trying to talk us into getting Olga to, you know, get into his trial. He's like saying, no, 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 no. You know, the neuro procedure is what everybody is waiting for. And all of the data is that it's, it's saying, yeah, this is probably going to work for almost everybody. That's an interesting thing too. It's not going to work for everybody. Apparently for some people, the, um, the, the, the neuron process, the neuron technology platform is not able to, um, uh, either replicate the, the cells, you know, so that they can, you know, multiply and grow and grow and grow, or they're not able to increase the neurotrophic factors inside the, the, uh, stem cells, um, themselves. So it, they just aren't taking, but apparently those are, outliers and i don't know i don't have the data yet i'm so jacked you're looking forward to that data this time next year is i think when we'll have uh, some real data that we can look at and, and talk about but um, um so the fda is saying yeah you can do a parallel track please go ahead and apply for it and then apparently brainstorm is saying yeah no we're going to say no to that and we're not going to apply for this, right? Which, which at, on the outset makes it look like they're, you know, fiends and they're not, right? I mean, for crying out loud. Yeah, of course they're, they they want to make a buck, but they understand that, um, no, they're, they're doing God's work here. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> you know, the, there's a reason why ALS hasn't been solved yet. And it's because there's no money in it. Right, your your potential um, group of people that would benefit from whatever treatment you develop um, is, you know, the universe in America would be sixteen to twenty thousand people, right? Compared to muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, compared to cancer, compared to, um, you know, that's where the money's at, you know, and and so. So why invest in that kind of in, invest in that kind of a thing? And 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 what I this is the brilliance of this this company is that they didn't brainstorm didn't say we are going to set out to to cure ALS. They said they're going to figure out the neurodegenerative diseases spectrum. They're going to figure that thing out, right? And that's why today, July third. Brainstorm announced that they have, uh, they're about to enter next phase of study for using the neuron technology platform for multiple sclerosis, ladies and gentlemen, right? So the, the decade worth of research and development and blood and sweat, and I'm sure a whole bunch of other fluids that were spilt in, in getting this technology up are well worth it because it's not just going to be for ALS now, and we can see it because they've got the MS indication now, right? So they're applying the same technology for this particular indication. So then why? Why aren't they applying? Um, and it's it's eluded me. I, I, this is, it's been a little tiger's tail that I've been chasing, and I'm not quite sure yet. So I'd love to get your help out there, you, you, Googlers or Bingers or whatever your thing is. Um, um, because again, that's what's happened in the past. And, and we know it's happened for the past, in the past. In fact, the FDA has a whole webpage that says, look, here are the, um, our, our compassionate use, uh, track, our, uh, our alternative track, our investigational track. There's, they've got alternatives that they will do and they'll do parallel tracks as well. So they've got a whole, protocol established for all of this kind of stuff but brainstorm not applying for it and that's what the fda is saying is saying fantastic we have no problem fast tracking this process but brainstorm is going to apply so brainstorm is not applying i believe i think i'm learning still because they ha hmm. because they haven't gotten wow that's an interesting email one moment please so, sorry, Sam, um, they haven't gotten the wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean, know what I mean from the FDA saying your phase two um, um, findings are off the 
what's what, what is it? What are they off now? I think at first it was the chain. I think then there was something about a hizzy. Um, maybe, you know, whatever they're off of now, because you know, so they sh they should be able to see these results and say, holy crap, Ola, this has been the these numbers. And we'll verify them. We'll get our own scientists to take a look at this stuff. But these numbers are really showing some some real positive growth. Um, so yeah, go ahead, go ahead and do the alternative track because we want the people who are suffering to be able to access this stuff immediately. Because remember, people get ALS all the time, right? <laughs> Diagnoses are happening constantly, right, across America. Um, so um, um, let's help these people and let's get them quickly. Let's catch them early when they get the, the di you know, the diagnosis immediately so that we can do the regeneration process before they lose their muscles and their the atrophy and the muscles deteriorate and they lose functionality because once she's gone, apparently it's real hard to bring her back. Um, but, you know, physical therapy and occupational therapy and all that. So there's a lot of stuff. So anyway, um, but they haven't gotten the wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And, and, and so why would they need a wink, wink, nudge, nudge? I believe it's because if they did a parallel track thing, right, and um, there was some sort of a scandal or something that broke out as a result of the parallel track. So let's say, for example, somebody dies right they do the parallel track and the person dies as a result of the procedure for example the spinal tap you know kills the person you know it the likelihood is um, very low but you know it's a procedure it's an invasive procedure you know they call it minimally invasive but they're going into your spinal cord you know it's not it's a it's a delicate part of the planet you know what i'm saying so um that could taint everything that's been done to date, right? Because that news would get out, right? The insurance companies would go, hmm, fascinating, right? The provider organizations, the HMOs, the scripts and the Kaisers and the, you know, all of the hospitals on the planet, you know, in the, in the world are going to go, wait a second. Great that it worked beautifully in phase two, but I'm not, I'm not, you expect me to take on that risk of, you know, applying, um, you know, going through this procedure. You know what I'm saying? The scandal could suddenly break out and the, you know, 16, 17, 20 plus millions of dollars that have already been spent on the, re, you know, research and development and the getting this thing through the trial process and, you know, all of that stuff can just go to, go to not because they'll get the FDA approval maybe okay or, or or the FDA might look at it and say mm, ha, ba, 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 you know this might be a promising um, um, formula or a promising approach but this particular treatment is not promising because the risk factors of you know what I'm talking about there could be so many things that could occur that could risk the the, the entire integrity of the FDA trial that's being that's being conducted right now. And ultimately, ultimately, um, that's what we want, right? Because, you know, again, you know, being part of the trial is, is, is you know, the, the people who are, who are in this trial are warriors, man. They are, they, they, I'm telling you, it's, it's a big deal. And remember, it's not you and me. I mean, if you have ALS, I don't, it's not people without ALS that are doing this, that are doing these 14 trips and getting the lumbar punctures and going through the bone marrow aspiration, you know, for the neuron trial process, right? It's people with ALS. It's people who are weak, who are tired, who, you know, even though the, their symptoms may have only, you know, started 20, 24 months ago, damn symptoms sucks, right? It's very bad symptoms, you know? You know, I know a person who is about a year and a half into diagnosis and who gets winded just walking from the couch to the bathroom, you know? And, and this was apparently a guy that was like, uh, you know, and I'm, you know, healthy guy here, you know, Big, tall, strong, you know, 18 months ago, right? And now can't go to the bathroom without having to stop and take a break, catch his breath, you know what I'm saying? So it's those 
people that are having to do these 14 trips. So let's let's not forget that we're talking about sick people who are doing this sacrifice. You know, it's, it's just terrible. So the trial is the point. The point is to get this thing approved immediately, have everything, all the ducks lined up so that when we are here in 2021, those of um, those um, patients um, with ALS um, who haven't died, um, you know, can live. How about that? How about that? Right? So, okay, all right. So, so, so if you're a brainstorm cell therapeutics, you don't have much incentive right now to apply and jeopardize your entire clinical trial, which would then potentially jeopardize, you know, the clinical trial that you just announced for the uh, multiple sclerosis indication, right? I mean, it could be a disaster. The whole thing could fall apart. So from a business standpoint, Brainstorm is like, yeah, you know, we understand <coughs> we have this hospital exception program, you know, for compassionate, you know, um, care and whatnot, even though that only serves 13 people across the planet. That's it. Um, but we're going to keep on going with our um, trial here and complete the track. And even though we are basically saying to the whole planet in all sorts of ways that um, we got it here, folks. Okay, it's not a cure necessarily. It's not curative. It doesn't fall into that um, domain yet, even though I'd love to find out what exactly is it that makes a treatment curative, you know? So um, they're just they're just holding on, right? Because the FDA is not like going, yeah, yeah, don't worry, you're in. It's so good. They're not doing that part of it, right? And and apparently that's again, you know, uh, my 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 journalism here is real bad. You know, this is on. You know, I'm going off of tweets that I've read. I'm going off of an article I read from long time ago, like four years ago. Um, but basically, it suggested that that's basically what would happen. That's what could have occurred with these other drugs, right? With these other procedures, with these other treatments, you know? And and I'm willing to bet that if you know anybody who is really in the know about this stuff, I mean, what do I know? You know, I'm an assistant principal of a middle school, you know? I run a cybersecurity education program, you know, for, for you know, I'm a professional development guy, you know what I'm saying? I teach college classes at a university, you know? What do I know from neurology? What do I know from from uh, clinical trials, you know, but, but, you know, then wait until your wife gets diagnosed with something like this. Wait until the love of your life is basically given a, a death sentence here. What are you going to do? Sit back and say, well, you know, the FDA knows best, honey. You know, I, um, I'm afraid it's not. So what, what, what the, the issue then is, is how do we mobilize? How do we get the FDA to say, you know what? Yeah, we really do need to have a, uh, another, come to Jesus conversation with Brainstorm's, you know, you know, chief scientific officer, Brainstorm's chief executive officer, financial officer, get together, sit down with the head honchos of the uh, federal, um, you know, the Food and Drug Administration and say, yes, we see that this is probably going to pass. Let's go ahead and um, fast track the process as best as we possibly can. And I, and I have a feeling, again, not really based on anything that's that would stand up to journalistic standards here, but I, uh, but I've, 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 I've seen enough, you know, I've talked to enough people and I've, I've read enough and I've listened enough to, to get a vibe about this, that they kind of want to do it. <laughs> you know, it's just that they are really slammed. I'm talking about the FDA. They want to, I think they want to get together, sit down with, with, with the ALSA. And I think they want to do it. So anyway, that's the um, lowdown for now.